This is a DR10, uh, which is based on the common uh, team associated platform. So you have the uh, Pro 2 chassis with uh, the buggy uh, front and rear suspension arms, uh, if you really think about it. So if you have an SR10, uh, for example, a Pro 2, it's all the same. It essentially is all the same. Uh, now, yes, of course, the short course is going to have longer arms, but tearing down and fixing things is going to be the same. So uh, now I'm going to continue with this video assuming you don't have any of the others, but if you like to stay with familiar platforms, I do recommend you stick with the team associated platforms. Uh, if you have an SR10 or a buggy, for example, the new RTRs that they have out, uh, you'll be able to swap arms, things like that. Now there may be a difference between gold wings versus non gold wings. This one has the gold wings. Uh, gold wings are amazing. Uh, but anyway, the I'm gonna get started. So electronics, really quick. I'm not gonna do them all. I, uh, but the ESC and the switch. This is just double stick tape. So just pry this out, pry this out. Just be careful. Flathead screwdriver, stick it in there. Pry it out. It'll become un, un, unstuck. And this one just unstuck. Then use double sided tape. Stick the new one on there. Uh, for the receiver, uh, just remove these two screws, the cap will come off. So one, two, this will come off. The receiver just pry it out and you'll be good. You can disconnect the two wires and that'll free up the ESC. And the ESC wire just goes under this uh, little Velcro strap. And then the servo, well, it just goes here. So that's all you do for these. Now the servo, servo's pretty easy. Just remove these two screws right here, one, two and the servo just comes out the top. Uh, and then you can remove those two mounts there on the side. Now, uh, quick little note, if you ever use a transponder, the B6.3, you can replace this mount with that mount, and it's pretty cool because it has a little bridge over it where you can fit the receiver. Sorry, not the receiver, the transponder. Or just remove that screw and put the transponder there or somewhere. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the front end now. Now for the front end, I am going to remove this right here. Now I could remove this one or this one. I'm choosing this one because it's perpendicular to the car. It's just easier than sticking my driver this way. That's the only reason why, but honestly, it does not matter. Now, do you have to remove the ball stud? You do not. Uh, what you could do is, so I'm putting my finger here just so the servo doesn't shift. Uh, you could just pop it out and that's fine. You could do that. Uh, I am just taking the ball stud out so that I don't put extra stress on plastic components that don't need to be stressed, such as this one. All right, and this is it. There's no spacer, so you don't have to worry about anything falling out. Now we're just gonna remove this and that, and then we're gonna go to the bottom afterwards. So let's go ahead and remove those two. Now you could use an electric screwdriver. As of this time, as of the time of this video, uh, there's a few options out there uh, you may want to consider. Uh, Dremel Tools makes some really uh, good quality uh, screwdrivers and their low power is actually lower than some of the other options uh, compared to, let's just say, a Makita or a Bosch uh, or any of those. So that's something to consider. Now on the bottom side, we're gonna remove these two screws and below this plate, there's gonna be two more screws. Uh, but right now we just, remove, we just want to remove the two screws from the bumper. Now, I will not be removing the bumper spring, or maybe I will, I'll see. I may change that in my mind. All right, so those are the two from the bumper. So that'll free up the bumper. Now you would actually have access to this. And now if you take a really hard hit on one of the arms, sometimes you may break that uh, plastic bulkhead. Uh, you can always get the steel one. Steel one's pretty good. It'll add 
a few grams. I don't remember how many. That's actually what I have on my short course. Now, keep in mind that this steel brace is many times thicker than the short course or the buggy for that matter. So you may not need to, it may not be an issue. All right, now the front spring. I can remove the two screws here in the front and then the bumper will come off. Or I can remove the two screws back here, right back here, and then the bumper will come off with the spring. So that's, it's up to you what you want to do. It doesn't matter, Those are that's what you would have to remove. Uh, or you can just flex this. I'll be fine, just don't overdo it. And then just remove the two screws, which is what I'll do. Now I do like associated vehicles. They're very nice, very well built. Uh, the engineering on them is quite good. Uh, they're lightweight compared to some other counterparts. Uh, for example, the Traxxas uh, counterparts. The, if you compare the drag cars, uh, this one, I don't remember the exact numbers, but this one is probably about 100 to 150 grams lighter than the drag slash. This is uh, just the rolling chassis with electronics. So no body, no battery, no wheels and tires, right? The assumption is you could run the same body, the same wheels and tires. You could run, uh, what am I missing? So just with the electronics, the stock electronics and the stock wheelie bar, this one's about 100 to 150 grams lighter. Uh, but anyway, moving on, this removes the entire front end. So the entire front end just comes off and now we can start just tearing this apart. And it really depends on what it is that you need. Now for the belt crank, if you ever replace this, uh, I don't really see a need, but if you ever replace it, you just remove these two screws this will pop up and all of this just comes out. Uh, if you want to clean the bearings inside, uh, whatever it is. And then after that, you would just remove this screw and this screw. So that's all you do. Uh, so that will take this plate off and then these two screws will remove everything. And then obviously pop the links off. That's all you really have to do. Now, I'm not going to do it in this video. Uh, that's really all you have to do but I am going to pop the links and just start disassembling uh, the rest of the vehicle over here. Now I will have to remove the spring or the bumper, it's up to you. And the reason why is because I want access to that front plate so I can show you what to do. Now, if you're watching this video but don't have a DR uh, 10 yet, or maybe you're contemplating a drag car. Uh, if you want something that's an RTR, I would say DR10 is probably one of your best options. Uh, drag slash is pretty cool. Uh, it is. It's about $500, I believe, as of the time of this video, uh, versus the DR10 is probably about 330 uh, somewhere around there. Maybe they're on sale, maybe not. Uh, I forget what the low C is. Uh, the low C you have to tune the rear suspension or else it will hit the dust cover. So that's something to consider. Um, I mean, if you're not planning on keeping something stock or you're just planning on building something wild and crazy, then you're probably not even looking at this anyway. Uh, but here we go. So that will give us access to this portion. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove two of the links. There's a variety of ways to remove the links. One, well, just stick a driver in here and take the ball stud out. And this is actually a very good idea. Or you can just pop these out. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is I don't have to worry about a spacer. Uh, popping them out would be a lot faster and a lot easier, I believe. Uh, but I don't want to stress the plastics if I don't have to. So that's one of the differences between this video with the DR10 versus the SR10, if you have seen my videos with the SR10. So the SR10 teardown, I just pop the links out. This one, oh, here we go. Now for these, just be careful to catch the nut. Uh, I didn't explain it, I just stuck my hand in there to catch it and forgot to tell you, uh, but that's all you do. So for the steering, you are going to have underneath these steering knuckles, that little section where the nut just keys in. So make sure you just, you catch it. 
That's all you need to do. But this will release it. Now, this is very important for this little section right here. For this little section, you have that tiny little screw. And this little screw, this is just a retaining screw. So it's just a screw to retain the pin. And this is generally how team associated vehicles are built. And then the pin will slide out. You may have to use a pick or something to just push it out and help it out. But that's it. So there's the pin. And I'm actually really liking the build, the fit and finish of this car, to be honest. Uh, but here we go. So now if you want to service everything inside, you just take your two millimeter driver. Two millimeter driver is the driver you're going to be using the most. So make sure that you have a quality two millimeter driver. Uh, I really like my MIP tools. Those are some of the tools that I would recommend. There are so many other tools that you can get as well that are high quality. Some of them really look flashy. I don't really care, uh, to be honest, if it looks flashy. I like it to be practical. And these are very practical and they do the job. The other nice thing too is if you look at the shape here, uh, let's just say you were using it for something other than an RC car and there was a, a screw that was stuck. You can always stick this on the screw, put a wrench here, just a box wrench, and then turn it. Uh, that's what this is for. Some of you already knew that, uh, but if you did not, that's what that is for. Now, when you're removing this, you have to be careful because there's these little cups here. Uh, let's say I removed both of them, good. This will slide off. You need to make sure not to lose these. Look like little hats. Uh, these little bushings, uh, this is what allows things to move freely and reduces friction on your steering. And here they are. So you wanna make sure you don't drop these or lose these. Uh, do not stick a screw in there without the bushing. There's gonna be a lot of slop on your steering. You don't want that. All right, so I'm placing this this way. This would go that way. Uh, now, in order to remove this, we just take the screw out, and then this would just come out, and that's actually it, uh, which is actually quite nice. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do this. Now, you can always use a wheel, so if you stick a wheel in here, you can use it, or you can use a driver. It's up to you. I would just use the wheel. Let's see if I can do it by hand now. Now, if you're wondering what nut driver to use or wrench, well, it's a 12 hex wheel, right? So 12, 12 millimeter. You could use a socket, but just use a wheel. All right, that is it. Uh, there's thread locking compound. This would come out. And you have your two bearings here, and these bearings will just pop out. So all you would have to do is just stick a driver inside. Uh, any driver would do hell. You could even use a pen. Nope, never mind on the pen. It's too thick for that bearing. So just use another driver. This is my 2.5, right? One bearing is out. And then just turn around, just pop the other bearing out the other way. And that's it. Now, to reassemble, quite simple. Just place the bearings back in. Just make sure when you're putting them in, you're putting them in relatively straight. If you put them at an angle, they'll get stuck and you can damage the plastic. You don't want to do that. Uh, but here we go. So this will go in. And this always goes in through the opposite side of wherever this is pointing, right? So it's gonna go in the direction that it's pointing. If you were to install it backwards, you would quickly realize what went wrong. Uh, and in order to replace this, uh, you don't actually have to remove the entire thing. Uh, so if you want to replace the spindle, you don't have to. Now, do not over tighten this at all. Uh, this should move freely. Uh, here we go. And then when installing these, don't flip them this way or the other way to install them. Just do it horizontally. The reason why is you don't want those bushings to fall out. Uh, there we go, so I'm sliding them in. This is actually quite a tight fit, but it's sort of surprising how it moves, uh, considering how tight. So that's something you may want to uh, maybe remove some material. 
Uh, but right now we're just doing a regular build. Although, keep in mind, it's a drag car. Steering's not really something you're going to be doing as much as a, say, off-road car. Or, you know, any other type of racing other than a straight line. You actually need minimal steering input compared to other forms of racing. There we go. All right. That's really all you need. Uh, and that is it. So, here we go. Uh, spoken about the links. Okay, shock tower. Before we build shock tower, you're going to need to remove that screw, that screw, and then this will come out after, oh, sorry, a third screw right here. In order to remove these, I'll show you how once I remove the shocks. But then you have these four screws at the bottom. Shock tower will come out, so you can replace it. Now, let me go ahead and rebuild this. So in order to rebuild, you just place this here. Now the pin, remember, goes in through the back. So it's, it goes back to front. Just make sure that you line them up correctly. Doesn't want to, there we go. All right, fabulous. And now we just put the retaining screw. And the screw, really, it barely touches or overlaps, and that's enough to keep that pin in place. Uh, but all right, uh, really quick, let's do the shock. So the shock, quite simple, uh, you just remove the screw, and that's it. So remove the screw on the outside. And now your shock is free. So in order to remove this whole thing, unfortunately you do have to remove the shock. So for this, you're going to need a 5.5 nut driver and sometimes the nut will come out uh, on its own sometimes you will need a two millimeter driver here on the other side uh, but you would just do this and that would be all so the nut would be out here's the shock and you, this will slide out now when that slides out there's another 5.5 millimeter nut in here and that's the one you would have to remove so you would remove this one i'm not going to you just remove this nut. You're gonna need that two millimeter driver. So you're just gonna hold them like this. And then you just remove this. And then you would do it to both sides. So you do it here, there, remove that screw. And now these four screws, now your shock tower is out. But here's the shock. So if you needed to replace them, that's all. Do not lose this. And if you needed to open these, if uh, you pull this up, hold the spring, and then this thing will just clip off, so it'll pop off, just like that. And then there's the spring. So if you need to swap out the springs, that's how you would do it. Uh, now, these are quite oily. Uh, you don't really clean them in the factory, but the machining is so nice on the exterior of these bodies. This is actually very nice. And probably some of the nicer machine shocks that I've seen. Uh, very soft, so very light oil. Not sure what oil there is. There's actually a little bit of air in there, but I guess you don't really need much. It's a drag car. Uh, but uh, if you don't have the proper pliers to remove the rod ends, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, you can get, you know, right, if you have the, uh, they're not nylon, I forget what they are. It's these pliers with these little inserts. You can grab them, or there's actual shock pli pliers that tend to be aluminum, so it's a soft material. Grab them, right, they're just smooth. But if you have regular pliers, just grab a shop towel, fold it like this, so four layers, stick it in here, and then just use the pliers, hold it tight, and then just turn this left, and that's really all you need. Uh, that'll be good enough to protect it. Uh, let's see. This is so oily. All right, so the shocks, again, very similar, DR10, etc. Uh, I want to open them just to show you what the pistons look like. Again, uh, you can use your uh, shock pliers. And then just sort of uh, stick a driver on the cap and it'll just twist off. So let's, so again, you know, I was just grabbing the bodies of the pliers and grab the driver spin. And I'm gonna be working this one. Uh, um, that, that is it. That's that's what this looks like. Uh, so there's no bleeder on the cap. You can replace these and use the buggy caps on there. 
Uh, as you see, there's an eclip, so this uses an eclip rather than a nut. And uh, out of the factory, it comes with quite a bit of air. There's quite a bit of air in there. So you may want to rework them, unless it works fine. I mean, you will eventually tune the suspension to your desire. Uh, but keep in mind, it is they are the front shocks. So front shocks on a drag car, you pretty much want them to drop really fast. And then it's very light on the compression because you're still accelerating forward. Uh, so that'll be fine. I'll worry about them later. Right now, I just need to rebuild. Uh, so that's it. Now, let's say you were removing the front arm. So I'll go ahead and show you. Uh, you're gonna have to remove this little screw again, that pin, this will come off. But then over here, you have these screws. Uh, the only screw you really have to remove is this little guy right here. So if we go here, 1.5 millimeter driver, and if you can do the right, you can do the left. If you can do the left, you can do the right. Right now I'm doing the left side, which is camera right. Uh, right it goes like this, so it's the left. Uh, but you just remove that and then go in through the back and actually, well, you could go either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, given that there's this brace here, I mean, this started coming out, I'm going to recommend going through the back, uh, not the front. The reason why is plastic is smoother. Uh, so let's go ahead and hold this and we'll go through the back. You only have to remove one, it doesn't matter, the pin will slide out. Here we go. Just gonna use this and there's the pin. So pin would come out, arm comes out and that's how you swap them. Like I said, this front brace is very robust. It's four times the thickness probably as the short course or the B6 one, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, but that is it. And then to reinstall the arm, just stick the pin back in, right? Line them up, stick the pin, put that screw in there. Snug is all you need and snug minorly, barely, lightly. Uh, don't want to screw that one up. If you screw up the arm, then it's done, that's it. Now, if you want to remove the upper bulkhead, uh, this one's quite simple. Uh, after you remove those screws at the bottom, this thing just pops up. And then once you remove the shock tower, then you remove the two ball studs and the steering bell crank, right? Just those two screws, this piece will be free, completely free. Uh, so that's what you do for that. So other than that, uh, we can go ahead and begin the reassembly. So the reassembly, uh, all of this stuff is just going to key in. So those little stubs just go in these holes. And let's see, there we go. Perfect. Uh, so we have that. Uh, and we have the steering. All right, good. Uh, I don't actually need to hold that. This can pop off again if it wants to, the bulkhead. Uh, but Usually you would be on a bench. I'm just doing this for the camera, lifting it up this way. I'm gonna grab my two millimeter driver and just start driving this in. So I'll start by driving this link. So this link will go in here. Now in these videos, I'm, the, the goal is just to do a tear down and then rebuild or show you how to tear things down. Uh, I'm not really going into some tips, but sometimes I may include one, uh, such as in the shocks. But I'll do that in a bit. Let me just do this. Uh, the body that comes with the full kit is actually quite nice. Uh, I, the, the one that I decided to pick up is the purple one. That's not the one. It's this one right over here. All right. And the reason why is I just thought it looked cool. That's really the only reason why. Uh, which is one of the things that I like about the DR10 bodies. You know, they have that purple, that lime green, I think an orange, really makes me think of those uh, late 60s, early 70s cars, uh, just the crazy paint job that they had. Uh, okay, that's it. So now we have to do the shock, uh, but here we go. Now on the shocks, one thing I will recommend is put a limiter here. And the reason why is so when you brake, the nose of your body doesn't scrape. Uh, so just see how much you need. Uh, you need the same amount 
of limitation on both sides. So you can use field tubing. Field tubing is great. Just make sure that you cut both pieces to precisely the same amount or else one of them will hit the limit before the other and that's going to throw off your steering and your car and you really do not want that. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. You could also use some nylon washers. Nylon washers work. Uh, if you can get nylon washers, uh, they sell them in different thicknesses. As of this video, well, just in general, you can get millimeter, two millimeters. I don't remember if they sell halves, such as 1.5 possibly, mainly because I've never needed to buy any uh, half because at that point, right, the next millimeter works uh, for my general use. But it is a possibility. But like I said, fuel tubing works and fuel tubing actually works as a spring as well. Uh, so that's something else to keep in mind. It would be sort of your soft spring being this and then it hits the tubing. Tubing will actually work as a really hard spring. So it'll be, there'll be a little bit of a bounce. Uh, which may be good. So if you're very good at cutting field tubing precisely, that's something I would do. Uh, if not, just nylon washers. Uh, that is it. Uh, in order to remove, so from the bulkhead, I showed you how to remove the bulkhead. Just remove these two screws and this plate will come off from the bulkhead. Uh, but this is it uh, for the front end. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish it off and mate the front end uh, just to complete this one. So that's one of the differences too between this video and the SR10. SR10, I try to keep them short. This one, uh, I'm just doing a really long video, but here we go. All right, so uh, we have a variety of things to do. We have to do the lower bulkhead. So we'll go ahead and grab these screws. And uh, now all four of those screws are the same length, so it doesn't really matter. I should have just started off with one instead of placing both screws there. The only thing that's going to happen is I'm going to drop that screw. Uh, but all right. So we have this, now we have that. And remember, it's the bottom two that go in. And then the other two will go once you do the bumper. Uh, so that's what you have to do. And I should have done the spring first. Uh, so that's something I'm gonna recommend that you do the spring first. I could do the spring now. Uh, I'll do it later. It's easier if you do the spring first for the bumper. But here we go. So I was referring to the bumper spring, not the shock springs, those are fine. I'm gonna do the top two screws first. Might as well do these. So these are those shorter screws. And all of these are countersunk. But here we go. All right, and now we will do this. I might as well do the steering. I could do the steering at the end. Now, I, I have seen some people go wild and crazy with the steering servos on these cars. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, if you built the kit, right, because the kit is the rolling chassis pretty much, you still need a servo, then, you know, get your heart's desire. That's, that's fine. But on something like this, the steering servo is good enough. Again, you don't really depend on steering as much or a quick, really quick response as you would on something else. Uh, so now I'm putting my finger on the other side to prevent the steering from going over there. And that's it. Snug is all you need. Don't over tighten anything. You're just gonna destroy plastics. Uh, all right. So for the spring, uh, the spring just goes in here, the screws go, just drop right in, and where to place them? Oh, my forearm was in the way, I couldn't see them. Uh, but here we go. I'm going to go ahead and put this on my driver now, and it'll be easier if I set this down. 
do that. So now that the screw is out here, I can just present the spring. Bam, ba -dum. All right, so let's go ahead and introduce the other one. Oops. And here we go. And that's it. And again, smooth is all you need. Now, when it comes to the uh, the bumper, uh, the bumper's all right. Uh, the drag slash bumper is a far better bumper, I think, for a drag car. Because this one, it's not really gonna do anything when it comes to protecting your body. Because it's so far away from the front end of your body that if you hit something, uh, the whole body's gonna flex and then uh, you generally end up breaking the fenders uh, right by the wheel well. So that's generally where it's gonna break or crack uh, versus the drag slash has that uh, longer protruding bumper with the large foam piece. So that is a plus. It's a little minor thing, right? A lot of people say, you don't need a bumper. You shouldn't be crashing. All right, fair enough. Uh, but the majority of people getting started are not that good. So they are going to be hitting things. Uh, and then one thing that uh, I want you to notice is that little, uh, that little stubby thing. Camera's not picking it up. Oh, there we go. Uh, that's for the buggy, for buggy body. So just to show you the similarities in parts. Uh, all right, so now we can go ahead and flip this, finish it off, and all we need are the two upper screws. Uh, and that is it. So again, uh, TR10, very great car. Uh, if you have one, you know, well done, good choice. Uh, if you do not have one, you're just looking at uh, sort of teardown videos, uh, just for kicks and giggles, or to see uh, how uh, to maintain them before you get one. Well, one, I mean, thank you so much for watching. Uh, but two, uh, DR10 is quite simple. It's quite straightforward. It would be a car that I would recommend. Uh, but here we go. So the whole front end is reassembled. Uh, on the next videos, we're going to start working on the rear. Uh, that will be more than one video just because of the steps required. Uh, so this is it. I hope you found this helpful or at least entertaining. Uh, please like, uh, subscribe if you have not. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,